listen guys, don't go like running into your living room like, Mom, don't touch the flowers. Uh, but a bouquet of flowers for Mother's Day, or any holiday for that matter, is the tradition no one really thinks about. You know, this came in my head yesterday. I was like, Frank, there's no way you should do a video on this. This is so incredibly stupid. However, when you touch those flowers, perhaps take a gigantic sniff of the roses, you're ingesting dozens upon dozens of agrochemicals, herbicides, pesticides, fungicides, insecticides that were used to grow them. Now, this isn't that big of a deal if it's a several time per year occasion, but a profession like a florist, anyone who handles flowers on a consistent basis, perhaps even just fruits and vegetables grown conventionally, like maybe you work in a grocery store, is at risk. In conclusion, the exposure of florists is an example of a unique situation in which a professional is exposed regularly to both a very high number of toxic chemicals and rather high concentration levels. According to the results of the risk assessment, Belgian florists who handle a large number of flowers are at risk of exposure to pesticides residues with potential effects on their health. So what they actually did in that study was they gave the florists cotton gloves to wear that would accumulate the pesticides. And what that means is they weren't normally wearing gloves and you can't expect a cotton glove to absorb everything that you're touching. So it's probably even worse without it. And they registered three to five times the allowed amount of chemicals for various categories. But the modern solution isn't really a solution. Washing your hands, wearing gloves, you know, you're probably cleaning yourself with modern chemicals and poor quality water, and the gloves aren't going to prevent the inhalation of pesticides, which to me seems like a more relevant issue. I mean, I would imagine the actual intake of pesticides is 10, 15 times, perhaps dozens and dozens of times over what is deemed acceptable. Imagine this, however, a typical situation where flowers are received on every table at a wedding, next to an ill person in a hospital bed. What about the water in the vase containing those flowers full of incredibly high amounts of chemicals? Even the bacteria could be very strong due to, I don't know, pesticide resistance. You know, are the remnants of that going all over the food on the tables, being sucked in by a patient nearby in the hospital? So the amount of CO2 that the flowers are taking out of this room versus the oxygen they're producing is insignificant. What's not insignificant is the countless flowers on this planet, the role they play in our environment. And this isn't really about the basic function of a flower, you know, being the reproductive organ on a plant, sucking in that CO2, you know, perhaps even pollutants, radiation, cleaning up the environment through their roots in the soil. Flowers are unlikely to be disturbed in those natural scenarios. But if you're a farmer, that makes their living on specific holidays, Valentine's Day, Mother's Day, it's pretty much a guarantee that tons and tons of chemicals will be used to ensure that nothing disturbs the profit. You, know, you might not be a vegan or carnivore, ooh wee, but you're still supporting conventional monocropping commercial agriculture. Yeah, all of those are pretty unique scenarios and it's hard to say there's any real harm in buying your date flowers or giving your mother a gift. What I would be concerned about is those previous events we mentioned, you know, anyone you observe that handles flowers consistently. I'm sure there are plenty of people that visit the florist on a weekly basis, maybe even pick flowers themselves from a garden that is heavily sprayed with pesticides, who knows? Maybe you work in an office and someone puts plants on your desk every day. You know, is a family member bringing flowers to a sick relative every week in the hospital? Do you work at a cemetery cleaning up the bouquets people leave for their loved ones? I mean, this is pretty low on the probability and priority list of lifestyle factors that can affect one's health. But, you know, with all the different types of professions and lifestyles out there, surely there are many who are damaging their health by frequent contact with dangerous chemicals. And you know this goes above and beyond flowers, guys. You want to be observant in your lifestyle. Think about different things you're doing from you know, the shampoo you put in your hair, what you brush your teeth with, the clothes you're wearing, how you clean your dishes. 
it's really significant that if you're putting time and effort into improving your health through your diet, through exercise, whatever it may be, that you also address other lifestyle factors. Uh, so thank you guys for joining me today. If you could please drop a like on the video, leave a comment down below, subscribe so that YouTube can unsubscribe you next week, and check that notification bell so they don't notify you of my videos. We are going to do a Q&A tomorrow, so you guys can leave questions down below or on the post that I put on the community page. Thanks again, guys. I'll see you tomorrow.